Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 6 for the 5% series. This is the series where if you only pick the players that I'm showing you, I think you've got a reasonably good chance of finishing the top 5% globally, which means you should do all right in your mini league. You might not win your mini league, you definitely won't win the whole competition, but you'll do all right and it'll be a respectable enough score. The reason this works is that the players that are lowly owned that do well don't affect your rank, but the players that do well that are highly owned and you don't have them, they're the ones that do affect your rank. So the trick is to try and choose correctly which highly owned players you want to be owning. <laughs> like I said, you're not going to win the whole competition with this because you need a few differentials. But if you don't choose differentials, you should do all right. Lots of teams, lots of managers seem to be wildcarding this week. So at the end of this video, I'll be showing four teams with the various combinations of wildcarding with and without Haaland and Salah based on a 100 million budget. All right, hopefully that made sense. Right, I was about to say thanks, bye. It's a bit early for that. Instead, I'll say, let's see how the players scored in game week five and then we'll look at our recommendations for game week six. Starting with the keepers, Raya got four. The other expensive keepers, nothing. The slightly cheaper keepers, Henderson got nine. It's bound to happen sometimes. All the cheap keepers at some point should get a clean sheet. Henderson happened to get his this week. He may well get another few before the end of the season. For the expensive defenders, Trent 11, Gabriel 7, Virgil 6, the rest nothing. For the slightly cheaper defenders, Konza 9, the rest nothing. And then for the cheapest defenders, none of them did anything. Apart from well, face had some nice fuzzy hair. For the expensive midfielders, Luis Diaz 16, Sun 10, Palmer 8, Salah 6, Saka got 4. Mid-price midfielders, Mbuemo 8. And for the cheapest midfielders, Rogers 10, he finally got a couple of returns, that was nice for him. And his owners, Smithrow 8, and the rest nothing. For the forwards, Haaland 9, Watkins 6, Solanke 6. And the cheaper forwards, Wood 8, Welbeck 6, Munez 4. Munez finally got a return as well. We're now going to look at the players in the system for game week 6. And I'm going to try not to talk too much because I'm slightly ill. In case you didn't notice, you probably didn't notice. Uh, so I don't want to be talking too much. But hopefully the colours will be enough of a clue what's going on. So Reyes, probably the best keeper in the system. To be fair, we have only had five game weeks. Things could still go south. But at the moment, he's looking very good. If you're wanting a new keeper or if you're wildcarding, he is a very good choice. Becker didn't play last game week. He was injured. Time recording, we don't know if he's going to be back or not. If you've got Becker, it's very reasonable and probably a good move to go up to Raya. Even if it was for a hit, I think that's probably worth it. For the other expensive keepers, Martinez is OK. Home away to Ipswich this week. I wouldn't be buying him, but he's all right. Absolutely would not be buying Pickford, but when Everton get into their run of form, he should be good. If you've got him, he's okay to keep, unless you're wildcarding, but don't go buying him, but he's all right to keep. Sanchez is a new entry, so I think the last two game weeks he's got 25 points, which is ridiculous. Can that be right? I think that's right. He's got a 15 and a 10. Next two home games, next two games rather, are home games at home to Brighton and Forest. Absolutely possible that could be two clean sheets for him. He's Chelsea aren't going to be as good as Raya, probably, but I think they are getting used to playing for the new manager. They're getting used to what they should be doing. He may be all right. For the keepers around the four and a half million mark, Sanchez is probably the best one, but he's probably not going to be as good as Raya. For the cheaper keepers, Flecken at four and a half, Henderson four and a half, Ariola four and a half. I think they're all much of a muchness. Brentford are coming out to some nice fixtures. So possibly if you had to have one of these three, he would be the better one. Some managers like to get two, four and a half and rotate them. Personally, I don't like that. I don't think it's a good idea. And then Ward, he represents any four million keeper that doesn't play, just sits on your bench. So if you go with Raya, it's fine to have a four million keeper that you're never going to play. For the expensive defenders, Trent is very good. 7.1 million. If you can afford him, he's absolutely worth having. The only reason really not to have him, if it means your 10th and 11th player that you're playing is a very weak player, then Trent's not going to be good enough to make the difference. 
So if you go for Trent, try and also make sure your other 10 players that you're playing are good. They don't have to be brilliant, just good. So Ben White is a good player. He didn't start the last game, but apparently that was due to a knock. So if that is the case and he gets 90 minutes normally, he is a good player. But for 6.4 million, you're better off getting Gabriel, who's 6.1 million for Arsenal. If you're wildcarding, definitely worth getting Gabriel. You need two or three Arsenal players, and Gabriel's probably the first one that I would choose, I think, of all their players. Possibly Gab, possibly Raya. One of the two would be the first one. Saliba's good, but he's not as attacking as Gabriel. But Saliba's got a reasonable chance, if he's fit, of playing all 38 games. There's a chance Gabriel may get dropped a couple of times. But Gabriel, on average, is going to score slightly more points than Saliba. So, at the moment, if you wanted Arsenal defenders, it's probably Gabriel, then maybe Saliba, then White. If Saliba and White were the same price, possibly you'd go for White. But anyway, any of them are fine. Van Dijk's all right, six million. Quite expensive for what you're going to get from him, but Liverpool have been very good with clean sheets. And then Gvardiol for six million. We've not seen attacking returns from him yet this season. Man City have just lost Rodri. It's going to be interesting next few weeks to see how their formation ends up firming up. But if he's playing every week, he's possibly just about worth six million. And if he's getting attacking returns, he's definitely worth six million. For the mid price defenders, Pedro Porro is getting dumped by a lot of managers. Maybe it's because they're on a wild card and they can afford to get rid of him. So they might not be desperate to offload him, but when they're freshening everything up, maybe he's just one of the players they want to get rid of. But he's still quite highly owned. He's all right to have. I would probably bring him into my team, but not this week. Maybe in a couple of weeks' time, I'd be bringing him in. If you've got him, he's absolutely fine to keep. If you've not got him, you don't have to feel pressurised to bring him in just now. Robinson's cheap. We're going to look at cheaper defenders now. 4.7 million. Fulham may well not get many clean sheets, but Robinson will occasionally get an attacking return. Lewis for Man City. If it turns out that he's playing most games, he's definitely worth having at 4.7 million. If he ends up only playing half the games, or worse still, half the times of a lot of games, then he's not going to be worth having. So for now, I've got him. I'm happy to have him. And I'll wait another few game weeks to see what actually happens with him. So he's all right. If you have Lewis, though, you have to make sure you've got someone decent on the bench who can come in for him. Someone decent. Someone who's playing, basically, on the bench. So new entry here, Masraoui, because he's getting more popular. Lots of managers are buying him. 4.6 million. Man United defensively seem to be sorting their game out. So he's all right. Konza, Villa haven't kept a clean sheet yet. He did get an attacking return last game. Away to Ipswich. It's possible they're going to go another four games without a clean sheet and then they get another goal. Probably not that often, actually, but he's all right because you have to have some cheap defenders. Burn, so no Newcastle players at the moment look like they're worth having. He's absolutely sellable if you've got him. If you want to swap Burn for Mazuri, that's right. And I'm probably saying Mazuri. Probably saying the name wrong. Uh, yeah, at the moment, I think no Newcastle players are quite worth having. For the cheapest defenders, Anderson, totally sellable. There's just not much of an attacking potential there, it seems. 4.4 million, Fulham, really going to keep a clean sheet. If you particularly want a Fulham defender, go for Robinson. If you want a defender around this price point, there's better ones in the system to choose from. Mikolenko's currently yellow flagged. If you want to sell him, that's fine. Eventually, Everton will come good and he'd be good to have. But we don't know if that's going to be this coming game week or it's going to be a few game weeks. He's all right to keep. He's fine to sell. I probably wouldn't be buying him except if I was wildcarding and I needed to free up the money. But then you might as well get a face from Leicester for 4.1 or Howard Bellis from Southampton for 4 million, both of whom are bench fodder. Another bench fodder boy is Grease from Ipswich. He's in the system now because a lot of managers are buying him. He is only 4 million. He gives you a choice of bench fodder, basically. For the expensive midfielders, Salah. Very good player. He may well be the second highest scoring player over the next few weeks after Haaland. I <laughs> had trouble remembering his name. I'm not feeling quite right. I've not made him green because there are other midfielders you may want to go for, particularly if you're wildcarding. 
if you've got Salah, he's absolutely fine to keep hold of. Lots of people online seem to be selling Salah to get Saka. You don't need to do that. Over the next six game weeks, it's highly feasible. Salah will outscore Saka. It's just that Saka's got three quite nice fixtures coming up. But Saka is getting like seven and eight, whereas Salah has had a couple of double-digit hauls so far this season. So I've not made him green. Absolutely don't need to get him. If you're wildcarding, you don't need to have him. If you've got him, you absolutely don't need to sell him. Palmer has got some nice fixtures coming up, as has Saka. They're both very good players. Son, he got 10 points the last game weeks. He's 10 million now. I think he's probably slightly overpriced for what he's going to be offering this season. If you've got him, he's fine to keep. Personally, I wouldn't be buying him at the moment, though. Fernandes, I've said he's good soon. Man United's fixtures from about game week eight is that are quite nice. Quite nice for a while. If you've got him, he's fine to keep. Personally, I wouldn't be buying him now on a wild card. I don't think I'd be getting him. But he's all right. If you've got him, you don't have to sell him. Luis Diaz, he's only playing like 70-ish minutes a game. But he's getting a lot of points. So he's absolutely worth having. But there is a slight risk involved. But if you've got a bench of playing players, and hopefully you will, then if he turns out not playing, he is all right. And he's gone up now to 7.9. If you've already got him, I suggest you keep hold of him. If you're wildcarding, it's up to you. For the cheaper midfielders, Diego Jotters could possibly have made him orange. He didn't play at all last game week, but we don't know that he's dropped. It might be that he plays 90 minutes this coming weekend and Luis Diaz gets nothing. So you don't have to sell him. If you're wildcarding, I'd say don't get him though. And if you want to move him on, that's fine. I probably wouldn't move him on for a hit though. Not this week anyway. Bowen's all right. He ticks along. He gets four, five, six points a game. Occasionally you get a two or a three. Quite expensive maybe for what you get. But he's all right and he's quite solid. Gordon, I think any Newcastle players are worth selling at the moment. They're just not, they've just not got their act together. But once they are starting to play well, then Gordon's probably going to be great and everyone's going to want him but at the moment you don't need him if you're wild carding i'd say don't get gordon embremo is worth having i guess if you've got jago jota actually it's worth moving jota onto embremo he's very popular lots of people are buying him brentford have some very nice fixtures coming up absolutely worth having as a very close to getting a very good score every game week so far he's only got one return though you do not need to get rid of Eze at all you can if you want to, though. On a wild card, I see some people are buying him, some people are not buying him. It's kind of a mixed bag. I guess it depends how much faith you have in him, but he should be a good player, and there's a reasonable chance at some point soon he's going to have several good game weeks in a row. And then Garnacho, if he ever gets a good bunch of minutes, he is going to be good. At the moment, I wouldn't be buying him. And it's frustrating because he's a very good player. He's just not getting played. For the sake of FPL, it's not worth buying him at the moment, I'd say. But if you've got him, you don't have to sell him. If you've got nothing else to do and you've got several free transfers saved up, you can move him on. But I wouldn't be desperate to get rid of him. And Kunku got a hat-trick yesterday, but that was in the League Cup. That wasn't in the Premier League. He's not getting the minutes at the moment. But if he gets through a spell in the Premier League where he is getting minutes, he's probably going to be worth having. But at the moment, he's very risky He's fine to move on if you've got him. If you're wildcarding, I suggest you don't get him. Smith Rowe, he's up to 5.8 million now. He's ticking along quite nicely. He can get an assist or a goal in any game. He's all right. He's okay. I've seen a lot of wildcards aren't choosing him. If I had a wild card, I would probably have him, I think. I'd probably have him because I've already got him and I've got money invested in him. Semenyo's very good player. He's got a very good chance of getting some good points in the next few weeks. He's worth having. Rogers, he's a bit like Eze in that he's a bit of a points dodger. He did get two assists last game week. He is worth having. He's not worth, definitely not worth taking a hit for though. Winks, bench fodder, four and a half million. Dibbling, he's a new entry. Bench fodder, but he is actually very good, but he's at Southampton. If he keeps playing, we'd expect him to probably get a few goals this season. If I had to choose Winks or Dibbling for bench fodder, I'd probably go Dibbling because he's going to be more fun 
and I think he's got more chance of going up in price. But most of the time, those two are going to be on your bench. Haaland, of course, a very good player, absolutely worth having. If you're wildcarding, I strongly recommend you try and get him in. However, I'm aware of somebody following the system who so far has had no Haaland and no Salah by design because they don't want them. If that's the game you're playing, that's fine. But I think you could have some very sad weekends sometimes when he does well and you don't have him. Watkins is very good, but he's hard to get to, especially if you've got Haaland, because Watkins is 9 million. But he's a very good player. Isaac's a very good player, but Newcastle are doing very poorly at the moment, so he's fine to sell if you've got him. And I wouldn't be buying Isaac. Havertz is a good player, not quite green, because we don't know exactly how Arsenal are going to be lining up against Leicester and Southampton without Odegaard. But he is a good player. He's worth having. Lots of people will probably be buying him this week. Jackson's a very good player, new entry because people are buying him. Next two fixtures at home against Brighton and Forest. Reasonable chance of a return then. He's away to Liverpool after that, which isn't so good. Then home to Newcastle. I'd say he's quite good. If you can't afford Watkins, but you can get to Jackson, I think that's an all right choice if you're wildcarding. I wouldn't sell Watkins for Jackson though. And then Solanke, 7.5. I think he is going to be good this season. Whether it's going to start being consistent from this next game week or another 2-3, I don't know. If you've got Solanke, I'd absolutely keep him. If you're wildcarding, he's absolutely a good choice to get. Wouldn't take a hit to bring him in though. For the cheaper forwards, Woods just consistently doing quite well, getting six pointers. So he's quite good and you probably need at least one cheap striker. So he's good. Calvert Lewin's a new entry because he's popular. Lots of people buying him. Six million. Everton have some good fixtures coming up. He's all right. Munez has been disappointing. Just one assist so far, I think. He's fine to sell if you're wildcarding. Don't buy him. If you've got nothing else to do and you want to move from Munez to Calvert Lewin or Wood, that's fine. Welbeck 5.8. He's okay. If you've got him, I'd say he's fine to keep. Brighton fixtures aren't so good coming up though, so if you want to sell him, you can. I wouldn't be buying him on a wild card. Yeah, I would definitely wouldn't be buying him at the moment. And then Vardy, again, because he's popular. Lots of people buying him, he's coming in. This game week, Leicester have got Arsenal away, but after that, Leicester have some very nice fixtures. So if you want a cheap forward, and you probably need at least one, 5.7, Vardy's a good choice. The thing is though, if you choose him, most game weeks you'll be playing him, which is fine. Joel Pedro, I think he may be flagged at the moment. I think he missed the game at the weekend. But he is a very good player. 5.6 million, worth having. He's on penalties, as is Vardy. They're both good players, really. And then any 4.5 million forward, they're not going to play. They're going to sit on your bench, but you have to have three forwards. But if you had Vardy and Joel Pedro and Haaland, that's all right. And it frees up some money to get a decent midfield. So I'm going to go through a suggested bench order of the goalkeepers based on the keepers in the system. The first keeper you see that you've got, I suggest, goes on your bench. So if you've got Ward or another 4 million keeper, obviously they're on your bench because they're not playing. Apart from that, if you've got Ariola, he's on your bench. After him, it would be Henderson, Flecken, Martinez, Pickford, Sanchez. I've got Becker up here because he should either get 90 minutes or no minutes. And then Raya is the best choice keeper for this game week. Now, I've had to split the rest of the bench order into two pages now. The first player you see that you've got, I suggest, goes in position three on your bench, the next player position two, and the third one you see that you've got goes position one on your bench. If we get the bench right, then your other players sort themselves out. So I'm suggesting if you've got a four and a half million forward there on your bench, then it'd be Winks, Face, Mikolenko, Anderson, Harwood Bellis, Byrne, Greaves, Munez, Nkunku, Robinson, Gordon, Dibbling, Vardy, Welbeck, Diego Jota, Gio Pedro, Consa, Isaac, Garnacho, Mazuel. I gotta get his name right, sorry about that. <laughs> and then uh, Pedro Porro, Luis, Gvardio, Virgil van Dyke, Bowen, Eze, Calvert Lewin, Wood, Smith Rowe, Rogers, Solanke, Semenyo, Saliba, White, Fernandez, Trent, Gabriel, Jackson, Sun, Luis Diaz and Havertz. And that's all the players that I've just shown you apart from six, which are the captain choices. For the captain, we got, I think, three good choices and three okay choices. Haaland, I think, is a very good choice for captaincy this week. 
He's away at St. James's Park, but Newcastle have been very poor. And Haaland can score against anyone. I think he's probably going to be the most captained. Salah is also a very good choice for captaincy this week. And Saka is going to be popular. But Saka only seems to generally get one assist or one goal a game. Whereas both Salah and Haaland can get more than one return a game. So I'd say Haaland and Salah have got more chance of getting a high score. Saka's got the best chance of getting a score above three, let's say. But if it was up to me, I'd be going I'd be going in the order of preference on the page, actually, I think. And then Palmer's an okay choice, as is Watkins, as is Mbemo. If you want to choose one of these as your captain, one as your vice captain, that's a good choice. If you can't or you don't want to, any of the players we saw that were green in the previous pages and was attacking, so a midfielder or a forward, they're a perfectly good choice. And now I'm going to show you some potential wildcards, because a lot of people are wildcarding. You may want to wildcard this week. Now I'm going to look at four wildcards. One with Haaland, one with Salah, one with both, one with neither. The one on the screen now is the neither one. So we have Sanchez in goal. Then we have Gabriel, White and Trent Alexander-Arnold in defence. Midfield is Saka, Palmer, Eze and Bremo Semenyo. Up front we have Watkins and Solanke. And I've put this together on the Fancy Football Hub website. I'm not affiliated, but they got some nice tools. And on the bench you'd have Henderson, Calvert-Lewin, Konza, Harwood, Bellis. This has a team rating of 93% for what it's worth. Predicted score this week's around 69 points. This squad is with Salah but no Haaland. You have Sanchez in goal, Gabriel White, Saliba, so three Arsenal defenders. Salah midfield with Palmer, Eze in Bremo. Up front we have Watkins, Solanke and Calvert-Lewin. On the bench we have Henderson, Greaves, Winks, Howard, Bellis. This got a team rating of 95%. It's going to score 69 points this week. This is the Haaland team. We have Rea in goal, Gabriel, White and Gvardiol in defence. Palmer in midfield with Embremo, Semenyo, Rogers Up front, Haaland, Solanke and Calvert-Lewin. On the bench, Henderson, Konza, Winks, Lewis. That got 96% and that's going to score 68 points this week apparently. And then this is Haaland and Salah. Flecken in goal, Gabriel White, Saliba in defence, Salah, Mbemo, Semenyo, Rogers in the middle with Haaland, Solanke and Calvert-Lewin up front. On the bench we have Ariola, Konza, Winks, Harwood, Bellis. That got a team rating of 96% and is apparently going to get 69 points this week. So as you can see, if you wildcard this week, you could be getting somewhere around 70 points, give or take a few, if you go with one of these teams. And this little bit, I'm recording after I've already recorded the rest because I forgot to say about the background image. So here it is. Today September the 25th, and apparently on this day in 1777, the British forces occupied the American capital, which at the time was Philadelphia. So I think we went over there to teach them how to play football. They never got the hang of it. They started calling it soccer. Weird enough, so we left. And that's how America was formed. And there we have it. I hope you managed to watch it this far. Thank you very much if you did. I am feeling a bit under the weather, so I may well have said some things a bit wrong there. But hopefully you got the gist of it. And just picking from these players and trying to be sensible, you should do all right. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. <laughs>